Well, hello everybody. I hope you all had a really good week. This is a Dell 7275 and it's a tablet. I got three of these tablets. Uh, they're all advertised as not powering on. Now, if I flip this over, what you can see is when I press the power button, nothing at all happens. No light, no signs of life at all. Now that could be because the battery is simply dead, given that it is a tablet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the motherboard from this tablet. I'm gonna scan it into the screen. I'm gonna connect it to my USB-C adapter and see if we can find any voltages on the board and maybe we can get this back working again. And this is what my motherboard looks like when I scanned it in. See, I've removed all of the heat shields that were covering all of the components. And as you can see, I made a bit of a mess of a couple of them. It was only when I watched a video afterwards I realised that you're meant to either snip these off or use a heatsink. You're not meant to just rip them off like I did. However, I'm going to use this as a learning experience and see if I can make some progress. So where we're going to start is at the DC in jacks, which on this laptop are our two USB-C ports. We have JUSB-C1 and we have JUSB-C2. So I've zoomed in on JUSB-C2, which is actually the first USB port we're going to check here. Now this felt a little bit loose, and as we know, these USB-C ports have a tendency to break off, so I wasn't sure if this was working or not. Also a little curious as to what this was. Uh, it didn't seem to be touching anything, but I thought it was possibly signs of damage. However, I decided I would plug in my power and take a voltage measurement. So introducing my multimeter in volts DC, I place my black probe to ground and my red probe very carefully to the fourth pin across here which is this one and when I measured here I found it measured 5.10 volts so what does that tell us well it tells me first of all that the USB-C port is actually making a connection because otherwise we wouldn't be getting any voltage there. However, we're only getting 5.10 volts. If we look up the charger for that Dell Latitude 127275, you can see that this is meant to be 20 volts. So what's meant to happen here is that this charger is meant to negotiate with the PD controller IC and we're meant to be reading 20 volts there. So what that indicates to me is that it's making a physical connection, but it's not getting boosted up to 20 volts. I've tried to draw this out again in Photoshop just to make a simplified schematic that I can, you know, go step by step and mark in the voltages at each point and see where we're going wrong. If you look here, we're reading 5 volts at JUSB-C2 on pin A4 and A9, which are VBUS. So this is described as TBTB underscore VBUS. And as you can see, the PD controller chip is U719. So I'm going to take a look and see if I can find this. I had a look just across from those USB-C ports and you can see that we have two ICs here that are U717 and U719. So I searched for TPS65982 and this is indeed a PD controller. Now if you look at the two ICs, just pause the video, have a look at the two ICs and see if you can see a difference between them. Well as I'm sure you all spotted, there's a mark over on this side of the IC that appears to be a sign of damage and that would certainly be a reason as to why we're only getting 5 volts here and it's not being boosted up to 20 volts but let me just show you with my microscope what that IC looks like and when I took a closer look at that PD controller you can see right there where the arrow is pointing it looks like there's a hole in that IC so that PD controller is blown So just going back to our schematic for a second, this I see right here, U719, is the one that has the hole in it. So unfortunately that means that this USB-C input is no good to us. However, with a lot of these modern USB-C devices, we actually have a second parallel input. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ignore this USB-C input here. We're going to plug our USB-C power adapter into JUSB-C1 instead and see what we're reading on the pins of that USB-C port. So this time we're going to plug our USB-C charger into JUSB-C1. I'm going to introduce my multimeter in volt DC once again, connect my black probe to ground, and with my red probe we're going to very carefully take a measurement at the fourth pin across. And when I measure there, 
I find that it measures 20.10 volts. So what does that mean? Well, the fact that we're getting 20.10 volts on the pins of this JUSB-C1 means that this PD controller, the second PD controller, U717, must be working. And we're getting the correct 20 volts now coming into the circuit. And this I see right here is U717. So this is the PD controller that's associated with that USB-C port JUSB-C1. Now we've measured 20.1 volts at the VBUS pin right here. So it seems like this is working. But are there any other pins that we can check on this IC to confirm that it's working? Thankfully, we have a full data sheet for the TPS65982. So you can see that this is a BGA or ball grid array type IC, and these are what each of the balls are for. So how do we superimpose this onto our IC? I decided not to overthink this one and just literally drop in the ball grid array layout on top of this IC and see if we could work it out from there. So let's zoom in a little bit and see if we can work it out. So obviously the difficulty with one of these BGA ICs is that we can't actually see the pins. So how do we take measurements? Well, as you can see, if I superimpose this over the IC, we can see that our VBUS pins here, which are connected to our USB-C port, are all along this side of the IC. And this track here is actually connected to these pins. So we can easily measure that VBUS at either the inductor here or the capacitor. So with my black probe on ground and my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range, I place my red probe to this capacitor right here and I find that we measure 20.10 volts on VBUS. Over on this side of the IC, we can see this pin for LDO underscore 1V8D. Now if I check out the data sheet, the data sheet says output of the 1.8 volt LDO for core digital circuits. So I would assume that this is meant to be 1.8 volts if this IC is working. So with my black probe on ground, I place my red probe to where we can measure this. As you can see, this follows a track onto this capacitor. So I simply place my red probe here and I find that we measure 1.78 volts. Similarly, if we look at this pin right here, LDO underscore 3V3, there's a track from here out to this capacitor. If I check the data sheet, LDO underscore 3V3 is the output of the V bus to 3.3 volts LDO. So I think we should be measuring 3.3 volts on this capacitor as well. So with my black probe on ground, multimeter in volts DC, plus my red probe to this capacitor right here, and I find that we measure 3.28 volts. So we have our 20.10 volts on VBUS and our two internal LDOs are also online. So I think the PD controller is working just fine. So where do we go next on the circuit after the PD controller? Let's have a quick look at the schematic again. So we're measuring 20.10 volts here. And the next component in line is an inductor, PL100, and then we have two input MOSFETs. So let's see if we can find these and see if these are being switched on and passing through our 20 volts onto this part of the circuit. Okay, so as you can see, PL100, which corresponds to this one right here. And we have our two ICs and then a current sense resistor. So we need to check here and see if our voltage is making it to this inductor. So with my multimeter in volts DC once again, I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to PL100. And I find that it measures 20.10 volts. So we're getting our voltage through that inductor. So we should recognize at this stage that this is a MOSFET 7405. The fact that it's an uneven number means that it's a P-channel MOSFET. We have three pins here together, which are our source pins, and we've already confirmed that we have 20.10 volts coming in from this inductor. So we have our gate pin here and our drain pin here. So I'm going to measure at the gate pin and see what voltage we're getting on that. So I place my red probe to this pin right here, and I find that it measures 9.10 volts. 
Now the drain pins of this MOSFET are tucked in underneath here so they're not visible in my graphic but I very carefully placed my red probe to one of those drain pins and I found that it measured 0.0, .0 volts. So this MOSFET is not switching on, it's not allowing our 20.1 volts any further. Now you may remember from earlier in the video that our second PD controller U719 had a hole in it. So I decided it would be a good idea to just remove that and see if that improved the situation. So after removing that dodgy PD controller I decided to measure the gate pin of this IC once again and when I measured it this time it actually measured 0.0, .0 volts. And with a gate voltage of 0.0, .0 volts that IC that MOSFET switched on and allowed our 20.10 volts through onto the drain pins. So that brings our 20.10 volts onto the second MOSFET. So I wanted to check and see if that was switched on. So I took a measurement at the current sense resistor right here and I found that that also measured 20.10 volts. So at this point I'm starting to get a little bit excited. So given that we now have our 20.1 volts power rail true to the current sense resistor, I thought it would be a good idea to just plug this back into the power button and see if we can get it to power on again. So this is my little power board connected with my power button and my LED. So I press to power it on. Okay, and nothing is happening. So press the power button and no light. So it looks like we might still be in trouble. Now, as I was touching around this board, I noticed that one particular section was getting warm around here near the input. So when I brought in my thermal camera, you can see that one particular component there is getting extremely warm. 90 degrees Celsius. And that component is this IC right here. So this is that component that is heating to over 90 degrees Celsius. It's an Intel DSL6540 Thunderbolt 3 controller. So this needs to be replaced by the look of it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have three of these tablets. So I have two other ones that are exactly the same that may well have a working Thunderbolt 3 controller that I can transfer across. I'll work ahead on those. I'm just not 100% confident in my abilities to actually carry out that job as well because this is a really small IC and it's a ball grid array as well which is, is difficult using the tools and the skills that I have at this moment in time. However I think we've learned a good bit today by going through that circuit. I'm going to make this available on the Google Drive to download. It took quite a while to draw out but hopefully it's an accurate representation of the input circuit on that and hopefully it's useful to you. I'll be back with something else next week guys. I hope you all have a really good week.